I'm never gonna give you up, baby. Never gonna let you down, baby. Never gonna run around and desert you. Oh, pretty baby. I'm never gonna make you cry, baby. I'm never gonna say goodbye, baby. I'm never gonna tell a lie and hurt you, baby. So let me love you. Hello everyone, Darth Vegan here, and um... Of course, we can lock up straight out of camp out. But, uh... Yeah. I'm heading to London for the National Animal Rights March, which happens every year. Probably except for 2020, but... <laughs> um, so... Yeah. Oh, got a message for us from Facebook. But yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll head there. And uh, anyway, for the past week, I've been at my aunt and uncle's house. Um, yeah. Um, which, which, uh, which uh, is quite nice because I saw my other aunt and uncle down on the island and then came back to the mainland. Guys, no. uh, it's very hot though. Said 25 degrees. Feels a bit like 30 to be honest. Oh. Right. <laughs> so here we are. Wow. Not too many to start off with, but I'm sure there'll be more. Hmm. Exciting stuff. My friend here. Yeah. And if you see anybody who needs British Sign Language, come to see her and we'll help them. <laughs> so here we have a man dressed as an MBR monopoly man. The beagle, uh, ooh, that's how I'm gonna stop. Probably off course. There's head cheese. <laughs> Gemma. Yeah, so yeah, quickly gobbled up my lunch and we should get going. Oh, got some interview. Oh, yeah, it's not the top.
liberation! Now! And the liberation! Now! Yes! Do not want to die. Do not want to die. Not ours. 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 For animal abuse. For animal abuse. For animal abuse. For animal abuse. For the animals. 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 It is a political choice to resist the hegemony of the multinational conglomerate. <laughs> to resist misogyny by rejecting a system built on commodifying the bodies of mothers. Yeah! To end climate and ecological destruction and to confront the culture of cruelty that is rotting us from the inside out. Finally, what we have to do is come together. And I want to quote Dr. Laila Kasim from Animal Think Tank, something she said last August. If we want to end the moral atrocity of what we do to our animal kin, if we want to build a kinder, more beautiful world where slaughterhouses no longer exist, where cages are empty, where there are only sanctuaries, not zoos and farms. We need to build a movement that is powerful enough to demand change. Our promise to the animals is this. You have all of us. The calves torn from their mothers. We see you. The donkeys in those Kenyan slaughterhouses. We see you, the dogs on the dog meat farms. We see you, the minks on the fur farms. We see you, the fish crushed at the bottom of the nets. We see you, the dolphins slaughtered in the Faroe Islands. We see you, the chickens in the factory farms. We see you, the puppies at MBR Bakers. We, acres, we see you, we know your suffering, we will never be silent and we will push forward no matter what life throws our way because the cruelties inflicted on you must end and we will do all we can to see that happen. We will protect you, we stand by you, we will fiercely defend you. You have all of us. Thank you. And I could feel the shift into the darkness that came with that. And I could see on my dad's face that he had also lost a part of himself. I saw my dad and my brother caught in a trap of long working hours, unequal opportunity, and struggling every month to make ends meet. Like so many other families, we didn't have any other option. I didn't know then that all of this my experiences, the experiences of other human beings and the suffering of all animals all had the same root. I wish I could go back and tell myself that. One of the worst things about growing up poor is that you don't eat right. Because it's not about what you eat, it's about eating. We had a fridge full of processed and packaged animal flesh, all with a hundred different chemicals that did nothing but poison us. Now I finally see that animals are subject to an extension of that same system that I saw. One that values profit, selfishness and commodity. All of us have a part to play in this story. 
And by rising to the challenge and stepping into our collective power, we lead the way for others to do the same. So work to find your place in this movement and pour yourself into it. Thank you. He is the epitome of courage, of leadership. He's the co-founder of Animal Think Tank, Animal Rebellion, and he has also been working with climate justice for a number of years now. I would like to call Dan Kidby to the stage. Hi, everyone. Hello. I want to tell you a story of something that happened to me two months ago. So it's pitch black in the early hours of the morning. Myself, Ben Newman, and Bo King Houston are with a small group of others who would prefer not to be named. And we're outside of MBR Acres, a puppy factory which breeds beagles to go and be tortured in laboratories. Ben's in front of me, bolt cutters in hand, and he's making a hole through the fence. And I hear the sound, clink, clink, clink. A security guard hears us and approaches and he shines a light through the fence. We freeze like statues. <laughs> Particularly both. <laughs> and then we hear them speak on the radio and they say, we think there are people here, we've just phoned the police. People around me start to get nervous, and I'm starting to get nervous. And a minute later, we hear sirens coming down the road. People start whispering, we should bail, we should go. Like there's no point in getting caught for nothing. Ben in front of me, bolt cutters in hand, just starts cutting double time, triple time, clink, 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 clink. Someone taps him on the shoulder and says, we should go, we should go, but he continues on and nothing is stopping him. He tears open the fence, charges through, and we all find our courage and follow. I approach the security guard and I say, I know that you are stressed, but we are not here against you. We are just here for the dogs. Please just leave us to it. Within four minutes, we've cracked open the doors and I'm running out with a dog in my arms. And for the first time in their life, they get to see the sky, they get to feel the wind, and they get to experience love. I will never forget the look in their eyes as they look up to me, gentle like a baby in my arms. And that night, we rescued five beautiful beagle puppies. My main passion is obviously nutrition and health, but he has really been an absolute powerhouse and voice for the animals over these years. So I would like to invite up on the stage, Paul Curtin. Like most people of my generation, I swallowed the lies that we need to eat meat for protein, milk for calcium, and fish for omega-3. Imagine my shock when 10 years ago, I started to look at nutrition with open eyes. By looking at the balance of available evidence and learning to discount studies funded by the very industries that stand to profit from a favorable outcome, I learned a terrible, shocking truth. It seems that the more animal products we eat, the quicker we tend to succumb to one or more of the diseases of affluence that most Westerners will, sooner or later, suffer and die from. Trouble was, as a hard gainy bodybuilder, I'd been convinced that I needed to cram in as much animal protein as humanly possible. To those ends, I was consuming a massive 500 grams every single day. 
I'm ashamed to say that weekly I would ingest 10 kilos of chicken breasts and 42 pints of milk, along with varying amounts of tuna, eggs and steak. I'd wash it all down with literally gallons of whey protein. I was consuming more animal products than anyone I'd ever met and was terrified of losing all the muscle that I'd worked so hard and so long for. But the data was compelling and I thought that I owed it to myself to at least give this plant-based thing a try. To my surprise and sheer delight, not only was I able to continue growing muscle just as effectively on a plant-based diet, I actually had benefits to my sports performance. It cured me at times debilitating tendonitis that used to see me having to skip training sessions, something that I did very begrudgingly. It also improved my energy and expedited my recovery from exercise. And the increased carbohydrate load meant that my muscles became more volumized, making them appear larger, and to some people's disgust, more vascular too. <laughs> in terms of vegan diets, the dietary term, in dietary terms, the prefix vegan just tells me what you're excluding, flesh and animal secretions. A great start from a health perspective to be sure. But did you know that most vegans are still dying of the same types of chronic diseases that plague omnivorous eaters? Most of them are preventable, many treatable, and some can even be reversible with a healthy enough plant-based diet. I believe that if we're kind enough to live a vegan lifestyle, then we just plain don't deserve them. So for those of you that perhaps aren't eating very healthy right now, I hope you might be inspired to commit to eating a more whole food predominant vegan diet. We need to be like a dog who woke up in the middle of the night and saw that the house was on fire and started barking really loudly to wake everyone else up. Our barks must be really, really loud. Because as Desmond Tutu said about people who do not want to hear a message, it is really hard to wake up someone who is just pretending to be asleep. One of our jobs is to talk to anyone who cares about environment that there is no such thing as a meat-eating environmentalist. <laughs> Tell them that raising animals for dairy, for meat, and also for wool and leather are the largest sources of methane and carbon dioxide. Tell them that half of the world's water resources are used for animal agriculture. Half. And you cannot be uh, environmentalists if you're wearing leather. Tell them about the cocktail of chemicals that is used to process leather. And if they do not care about other species, they should at least have some compassion to our fellow humans who work at tanneries, get sick and die prematurely. Mm. Yeah. Our ultimate responsibility. Let's do it. And we should never worry about being unpopular because every, if everyone was afraid of being unpopular, we would never have had Mahatma Gandhi or Nelson Mandela. Frederick Douglass was born into slavery. Eventually, he managed to escape, but then he fought and helped others escape too. Now imagine that you and your friends were somewhere out and you were kidnapped and you were taken in a truck and you were sent to be killed. But you managed to escape. What would you do? Would you keep living your life as normal or would you go back and help save your friends? Save the friend. Well, our friends are right now in that truck going to a slaughterhouse. So we must be taking it seriously. It's our job, it's our responsibility to save them. Yeah. You lot, 
You heard Dan talking earlier about the liberation of those five beagles. So on behalf of the grassroots animal rights movement, once again, let's hear it for the liberation of those five beagles. Come on! in this movement for over four decades now. I can tell you, when I heard the news about those dogs coming out of NBR, my heart soared, absolutely soared. So, for over four decades, I started out in the early, very early 1980s as a hunt saboteur. I don't know how many hours I've spent on the street handing out leaflets. If I had a pound for every march I'd been on, I'd be a rich man. And finally, I ended up in prison. But you know what? Those four decades have taught me one thing. One very clear thing, right? And there's no dispute in this. This is not anecdotal. This is fact. Do you know what worked the most? Direct action. What? That's what worked the most. That's what won the most battle for us. Direct action. Now, I had a phone call last week um, from some solicitor saying they wanted to talk to me about incitement. Apparently, I've made some speeches where I've incited people to break the law. Well, I've got a very simple answer to that. You know what happens to these animals. You know how they suffer. Last week, three vanfuls of beagle dogs were taken out of MBR acres by Impex at three o'clock in the morning. And those dogs are on a one-way trip. Now, I don't need to incite you because Achieve animal rights. Nothing else is acceptable. I'm with you all the way. Thank you for listening. Goodbye. There is nothing I can potentially add to that. So please give a big round of applause to all the speakers and to each other, to all of you, and see you on the streets. then so um, protest over let's go get a bit of food shall we uh, found on happy cow a vegan place so I'm um, going to go there there'll probably be other activists there to be honest and um, yeah so um, at one point there was this lady who recognised me from well she watched my camp out video and recognised me. It's the first time that's ever happened, you know. Where someone watched my video and then met me in real life. Someone who I don't even know, basically. It's obviously all <laughs> people, you know, in my life, they were like family. Right? Yeah. Okay. Food. I don't know what to expect, but uh, it's a vegan place, so um, I'm going to have a lot of choice. This is mad. Yeah. All vegan. But uh, it's really booked in there. So um, we'll have to get a take on. Obviously, um, very little menu. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. I don't know, I'm also kind of very. Yeah, I'm just going to get hit. And what are they going to do when I'm in the house? Yeah, I'm going to get hit. Yeah. Come around and get hit. Yeah. 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 I think the very first, very first action they went out. Breath about that. Um, so I didn't really know. Um, well, at least when I was at school, I used to get like quite badly bullied. Because I was like, yeah, 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 you do it. You'll be fine. You'll go to school. I'm out, but through different shows. But when I was younger, I was like, 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 I was like,
like, like, head, head, I, I don't know. Yeah, I'm waiting at the bus stop, waiting to head to Waterloo, but <laughs> it's a Channel 4! Yeah, this is the London office said on Google Maps. Wow. <laughs> Incredible. Alright, so we're right back at the pub. Yeah. Sam Storm. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. That's it. So, the train up. Next thing to help the train. And then, um, yeah. And then, if you like this video, maybe give that a drone, and as always, thank you so much for watching.